So today we're taking a look at a nice sporty type game. Baseball highlights 2045. Maybe I can get a home run. And it's out of here. The crowd goes wild. everyone and welcome to another episode of Let's Die For Games. I'm Mandy, the board gaming pinup girl. And I'm Tracy, the gaming maven. So if you didn't already guess, because I kind of said it earlier, <laughs> we're going to look at Baseball Highlights 2045. So before we get to all the good stuff, Tracy's going to tell you about some other fun stuff in the video. Yeah, well, if you're wondering how it's set up or just looking to see what the components look like, well, click on a timestamp. And while you're there, let us know what you think of the video by commenting and then subscribe because you can see what we're coming up with next. So uh, I think we're ready to jump right in, dive right in, bat right in. Bat right in, dug out. Yeah. yeah, that was terrible. Okay, <laughs> let's check it out. <gasps> so baseball highlights, hello. We want to win the World Series. Get those batters on base and, well, you know where I'm going with it. So in this game, it's great because you have coaches, you have other players, you have cyborgs to help you win the World Series. That, that's really the game, right? So we have here Baseball Highlights 2045. I love baseball, so I was really keen on this game. So here are the components. We actually have everything here, including some expansions and some bonus uh, starting decks. What we have first is we have our stadium mats. Each player will get one of these to play on. Then we have our various runners, slow, average, and fast. They're different colors. We have our pennants, which will determine whether you are home or visitor. We also have our score markers for our hits as well as our games won, so you're going to be marking those along the board. Player aids, just so you're not confused about what some of the actions are in some of these cards because there's a lot of stuff going on. Then we have our free agent deck, our four starting player decks that come with the base game. Then we have, as you can see, tons of extra starting decks. So it's really cool. you got a lot of variety, especially if you have a particular team you like. Maybe you're Kansas City, maybe you're Los Angeles, who knows. Over here is where we start to get into some really fun expansions. First we have our, uh, our Rally Cap, then we have our Naturals Magma, this is obviously our Naturals, and we got some cyborgs and fun stuff in here. This one here is our Robot Hitters, so mostly focusing on robots, where this one is the Cyborg Pitchers, focusing on the cyborgs. Then we have our Coaches, and a really fun one that was actually a bit of a surprise called Big Fly. All right, so here we've got it all set up, but I'm going to kind of explain how we did it. So first, each player is going to get a stadium mat. On their stadium mat, they're going to take their starter deck and shuffle it and place it in the lineup spot. As you can see, it says lineup. So place them all there. Each person will take a pennant and one person will be, oh, look at that. One person should be home and one person should be visitor. Then they'll take a, a batter, a hit, and also a game. And we'll put it on the zero spot. This one actually needs to be... Uh, batter because this is your hits and this is your games one everything else is just going to be available for gameplay and after that we're going to place our various types of hitters and runners to the side so they're easy access then we're going to put out six cards from the free agent deck so you can add in whatever expansions you want to the free agent decks right now we just have the standard we'll show what the other ones do in a minute then you're ready to play gameplay all right so how do you play this game this game is actually very thematic because other than the playing six innings, which you do by playing out six cards, that's the only real difference. But you basically play it, you're going to be moving your uh, runners around the board, you're going to be scoring them, you're going to be playing people to the on deck as pinch hitters, so it's kind of cool. So what do we have here? First of all, visitor gets to play first. They're going to play a card. The first thing that happens is the immediate action is going to happen. Now this is a, an effect that will affect your opponent. In this case, there are no hits on base, so that's not really going to happen at the moment, but there are other cards that are going to do that as well. Then the opponent would normally resolve their runs. In this case, it's the first play of the game, so they are not going to. And then we're going to put out our, our hits here, our threatened hits. So in this case, it's a single, and as you can see, it says on it, there's a little A there. That says average runner, so that's going to tell us that we are playing a blue guy. Now, what does that mean? What's the difference between them? Well, the white guys simply move the single base that they're supposed to move. The blue guys, if they are on second, they will come home. So they will normally just move 
If it's a single, they'll move one base, but on the second base, they will actually go home. Fast runners are great because they go one extra base, if they can, of course. If they're stuck behind a slow player, well, they're stuck behind a slow player. But normally, they would get to move an extra move uh, in addition to the actual hit that's being hit. So then what's going to happen is the visitor is going to look at their cards and they might want to choose now because before you play, you must decide if you want to put a card on deck. A card that has the pH for pinch hitter can come onto your on deck. So maybe I might want to play this late. This person might want to play it later on the turn. So they're going to put it in their on deck section here. They can put it under and they can bring that out later. They're going to draw back up because you always have six turns. You should always have six cards in hand to play. Then they would play a card. Again, they're going to do a cancel one hit. So what does that do? This cancels this guy. He doesn't get to go anywhere. Now they're going to do a single because there is no resolution of turn here. They're going to put an average runner for a single on base. In future turns, should the player wish to bring the on deck on as one of the six cards they play, they would then have to have another card in their hand that also has this pinch hitter symbol. They would discard it to their dugout and be able to bring that out as the played card. This is usually very handy if you have a very useful immediate action that's going to really hurt your opponent's runners or threatens hits. It's a really good time to play when they're going to get a lot of points. After six cards have been played out by both players, so all cards played will get played to the in play spot. Then the visitor has a chance to, because the visitor starts, they have a chance to do a defensive action. What does the defensive action do? Well, let's say a player here has runners, threatened runners, or, or base runners on, and they might be able to score them. Then this player can either take their pinch hitter or the top card of their deck and draw it and hope there is an immediate action that may affect their opponent so it doesn't allow them to score any more points. It's very handy if there's a tied game or the other person is going to take the lead because you already have the lead, but they take the lead. Then you want to try to play that card out if you can. That basically is the end of a mini game. The winner is determined by how many runs are scored. So let's say this player scores three, this player scores two. This player has won the mini game. So they would say that they've won one game. Traditionally, you play best to the, the first to four. You can play three mini series and do a world series. And that's where some of these other fun cards come in. So I'm going to show you here some other cards we have available, some of our expansions. So this here is our um, rally caps. So these are more powerful cards. They are going to uh, tell you um, what they, there's a lot more stuff they can do here, usually better hits and better runners. The other thing is the coaches. All right, so here we have some coaches. I'm gonna give you one that has some bigger text so you can see it. So what do the coaches do? The coaches are a little different. All the other expansion cards will just simply come straight into your free agent deck. You shuffle them in, or you can just play with them as a complete free agent deck. The coaches, however, after you've played three mini games, you'll move on to the World Series. So the big competition to see who wins. Everything is gonna be set to zero. And then each player is going to get to pick from these coaches. So each player will be dealt four coaches. They'll get to choose one, pass the rest to their opponent. They'll get to choose, and that player will pass theirs to them. They'll get to choose one until they have four. So the four that they got might not necessarily be the four that they have because they won't come back to them. Once you get into the World Series, you can use those coaches as an action to the side. So you would just play to the side and it may give you kind of a benefit action in addition to the six cards you play. So this here, for example, says double steal, one base runner advances two bases. So it allows for extra advancement. Some allow for extra purchasing or extra variety of cards in the free agent deck to purchase. So once you've basically gotten that down, you would simply play the game like you would with the mini games. It's just the World Series. And it's basically the first to four one games. The big thing of note is the buy phase. So after you play any mini game, whether it be in the, the standard mini games or the World Series, you'll have a buy phase. How does that work? Well, you see there's some green numbers on these cards. You're gonna add up all the cards you've played only in play. If you had to put cards in the dugout, they do not count. You're gonna add them up. So two, four, six, eight, and that one's worth zero. So I have eight. If the other player has less, they get to choose. Let's see what they have here. So they have two, four, six, eight. Well, no, nine. So these player will get to decide whether they wish to buy first from the free agent deck that's face up 
or if they want their opponent. They may not like the cards here because every card that's bought will immediately be replaced with a new card. So if they decide for the opponent's gonna pick, they're gonna buy cards. And the card number is the red number here. So this is the value you can use to buy the card. The red is the number the card is worth. So if you have eight buying power, you can buy a card or multiple cards up to a value of eight in this case. So if they want to buy this card, it would immediately be replaced. And then this player could play. What will happen with the bot cards? Those will go on the top of your lineup and then you have to demote somebody to the miners. So you gotta look through these guys. Usually you're trying to get your deck to be better. So you're probably gonna remove one of the guys that's maybe slower, has less benefits, and he's gonna go right in here to the minor leagues. So you're always gonna have a deck of 15 cards. Whatever you put in is gonna go out. So after the buy phase, then another mini game would happen until there is, like I said, a player who either makes it to four or you do mini series based on however many games you wanna play. So we're gonna talk a little bit about ties. Ties are interesting in that if both players have played all their six cards out and they're at the same number of runs, let's say they're both at two runs here and there's nobody on base that can score, everything has happened and there's nobody who's obviously won. What each player is going to do is they're gonna draw three cards from their deck, they're gonna keep them hidden and they're gonna both play one face down. Once both players have decided which card they want to play, they are simultaneously going to flip. This is where it changes a bit from the basic play. When they turn them over, the immediate action of the home player is going to go, then the immediate action of the visitor player, then simultaneously both players are going to put their threatened hits on. So if those immediate actions have caused any kind of scoring to happen, then, then if someone gets up a run because of the immediate action or anything that has happened, they would win the minigame. However, if, as you can see, nothing's happened here, players would put threatened hits on, they would take, of the two cards they have left, again, play another one out, until there is a clear winner. If there is no clear winner after those three cards, well, in good old baseball fashion, there are no ties, so you take three more cards, play it again, until obviously someone has one more run than the other. So basically, the way someone wins the game, as I mentioned, is games won. So there's no scoring with your players, there's no scoring with the coaches. It's simply every time you win a mini game with the number of runs scored, you will go down one on the games won track. Then you'll play again, you'll play six cards out, so on and so forth, until someone gets, like I said, to best of four, or maybe you'll decide, you know, one single game because you're in a quick, uh, quick uh, lunchtime, or you wanna play a full series, so you're gonna play three mini games, and then you'll come back and play a series, which is best of seven. The first of four out of seven will win. So when, if you play it like this and everybody's at three to three in a best of seven, someone will have to, they'll have to play the last round so that one player will get to four and be the ultimate World Series champion. So now we're ready to give a review of Baseball Highlights 2045. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I grew up in a baseball family. My brother was a baseball player, so I was all over this one, for sure. I was surprised because I do not like baseball at all. <laughs> I know someone's gonna leave me a nasty comment for that one, but I do love hockey. But I did enjoy this game. I really, really did. So overall, I liked it. So let's maybe get into the bits. So let's talk about, you know, let's just dive right into components. I'm gonna go right there. Sure. Well, the components are fantastic. You've got your own player player board, so you've got your kind of stadium. The cards are, are pretty simple, but there's so many cards, so they had to create a lot of unique art. So I really like that they made the naturals, like the kind of human ones, mm. and then the robots versus the cyborgs. They're all different looking, and they came up with some really fun names. I they, saw that. They kind of <laughs> took some of the actual baseball players right. in real life and kind of tweaked their names and changed them a little bit. I may not like baseball, but I am familiar with the players, so yes, I did notice that. So components, I mean, they're cards. I think they were a really good quality of cards, mm -hmm. thicker quality. Um, I'm gonna kind of talk about art and theme. It was extremely thematic. Wow. The boards and the pieces. Very. And I mean, it was baseball all the way. And then you did have that touch of like the cyborg showing you that it was like in the future a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you definitely saw that. So I mean, it's cards and the cards were, were well done. And um, I liked the fact actually in the uh, insert that you could separate them out. So you yeah. had room to do that. So I think overall that was well done. So let's talk about gameplay and the mechanic of the gameplay. Well, the mechanics are, like I said, this is where it gets super thematic. Yeah. So yeah. the only part I think that people get tripped up on is the threatening hits because mm -hmm. the idea is when you hit, you run right away, but you have to threaten them because they have to try to pick them off before they can make it to base. 
So you get your guys to base while the other person is playing. So that's probably the trickiest part. But really, the whole movement of the guys and advancing them and, like I said, picking them off or right. having them steal bases, the coaches giving advice, just so much that makes me feel like I'm actually in a baseball game. <laughs> really. Which is good. No, and, I, and it was good. And I found some of it a little tricky because I actually screwed this up a couple times uh, when I played it. And it's like, after I'm like, oh my gosh, I totally see what I did with the fast hitters. I was like, right off base, I was giving them two. And I'm like, well, wait now. That plus one doesn't happen until later. They're, on, they're base, on base. Yes. They basically move quicker on the bases during other players' hits. Right. Other so I thought hits. the game mechanic was, it was interesting and it kept the game interesting and it was fun. I did find it a little weird. Like the three player was kind of different. I should say it was, it was not bad. It was just different. Two player to me seems to be the best. Two player is great. Option. Like if you happen to have four people around, really it's sure. two two player games. So, but you can kind of switch it up. I just liked how it was the whole like you play the mini games and right. you play the World Series and it really it really was tight like tight race sometimes when sometimes when you play it like you literally come down to that last game and the seven yeah. games. So it's really cool. Yeah. So overall, I think the game mechanic we enjoyed. So it was just for me, I found it a bit odd at that three, but the, the two and the four worked. I think two is what most people played at. Yes. People didn't like the coaches. I hear people say they don't like the coaches for some reason, but I know you liked the coaches. I like the coaches. <laughs> Keep in mind, you know, they're really just, you, you, you are drafting them with the other player or other players, mm -hmm. and you you have seven games, possibly seven games, as little as four, but as many as seven in that World Series. So you could not necessarily play them all down, or you might forget, I actually once forgot. <laughs> and I was like, he was so good, and I forgot to use him. Yes. But they, I thought they were very helpful. They don't add tons to the game, but sure. they add that little bit of unique strategy that kind of pulls in another factor. Right. I like the pinch hitters. I use them all the time. A lot of people mm -hmm. don't use them. I like that option. And I like the fact that when you take them to the market, it goes right into your deck. Yes. Versus a lot of other games, which kind of dr like leads us into similar type games. So maybe I'll let you... Talk well, it's choice. similar to Dale Merchants mm -hmm. in that way. The, the the thing I found really tricky about this is most deck builders, you're building your deck right. to get bigger. This is really interesting. You're always at the same 15 cards because you mm -hmm. only have 15 players on your team. So you're having to basically downgrade people to the minors and to get better people, but they go on the top of your deck, so you have them right away, which right. is kind of handy. Which is, yeah. So, I mean, it's like it's a deck builder. So if you mm -hmm. like, you know, your Star Realms and things like that, uh, it's similar concept, but that's the difference where you're kind of staying within the same set of cards. Yeah. Um, and in Star Realms, I know you discard versus I know in Dale of Merchants, you, when you get a card from the market, it goes right into your hand, which is very similar of this game. Yeah. So, which is very cool. So I think we covered all the bases. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> I did it funny. <laughs> okay. I missed it in the first one, so I had to make up for it. <laughs> so overall, actually, before I even get to that, so this is actually on Kickstarter now. I don't know if this video will make it, but they have some like extra little packs and additions to some cards that already exist. So it's on Kickstarter if you want to back that, or if you're looking to upgrade your basic to like a deluxe deluxe, mm -hmm. now it's time to check that out. So overall, I really enjoy this game. Hugest thumbs up possible. <laughs> so I'll be, yeah, we'll be doing some more. We did a live playthrough. We'll be doing more of that uh, online. So definitely check this out. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Follow us on social media.